Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be previewing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Week 10 matchup versus the Washington football team. If you guys are new here, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button if you do enjoy these types of videos and leave your thoughts about this Buccaneers game as well as your score predictions down in the comment section below. Also, for those of you who do not know, I will actually be on location for my game reactions live stream. I will be at the Cannon Fire Podcasts Cannon Fire Watch Party at Berry House Brewing Company. I will have all the information about where that watch party is going to be and what time it is going to start at down in the pinned comment in the comment section down below. I would love to see as many of you guys there as possible. Let's uh let's all just kind of come together as a community, right? And watch some Buccaneers football together. For those of you who won't be able to attend, of course, I'll still be here live on the channel with my live game reactions as always. But with that being said, I have a lot of stuff, a lot of thoughts, if you will, about this Buccaneers versus Washington football team game. And the first thought that came to my mind was, wow, we already have a playoff rematch here from last year. Of course, we had the Saints uh, and the Bucks. That was a playoff rematch. But, you know, this was the wild card round. This was the start of the Buccaneers Super Bowl journey in the playoffs. Um, that they had last season. It started with the Washington football team. It ended with the Buccaneers winning the Super Bowl. Now we're getting a rematch. And overall, well, of course, the Buccaneers, they aren't a different team. They re-signed all of their starters. But really, the Washington football team hasn't changed too much either from the team that they were during that wild card playoff game. Even their quarterback is the same right now with Taylor Heineke. Now, granted... You know, the Washington football team did try to change some things at the quarterback position. They signed Ryan Fitzpatrick. He was their starter. Unfortunately, Fitz sustained an injury that has placed him on the IR since very early on in the season. Taylor Heineke came back in after some back and forth between him and Kyle Allen. Eventually, Heineke uh, ended up winning that job. So, hey, the Washington football team cannot escape Taylor Heineke, and apparently the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can't either, as uh, even the quarterback is the same in this rematch. So that was a really cool thing I thought as a storyline, you know, the Washington football team trying to get revenge on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for last year's playoff game. Of course, uh, both these teams are definitely in uh, different situations at this point in the year. We'll talk about that in a minute, but um, yeah, it's, it's just a fun rematch regardless. I don't think that the Buccaneers should or will take this Washington football team lightly um, because you know, again, the Washington football team is going to be looking to uh, exact some amount of revenge here for last year's playoff game. But the next thought I had in my mind was, man, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are really still banged up coming into this game. Now, right now as it stands, Sean Murphy Bunting and Scotty Miller could potentially play in this game. That's awesome news. Great news. You love to hear that. And if they don't play in this game, they should be ready for next week. Again, all good stuff there. We've talked about their injuries at length. But Rob Gronkowski has been ruled out. Antonio Brown has essentially been ruled out as well. And now Chris Godwin is going to be a game time decision. Just the Buccaneers cannot catch a break this year in regards to their injuries. Honestly, on the offensive and defensive sides of the football, uh, equally, I feel. You know, we've been talking a lot about the cornerback position. And yes, they're still banged up. Carlson Davis, he is still on the injured reserve. Sean Murphy Bunting, he might not play in this game. They have missed some very, you know, good stretches of time. Heck, even Rashard Robinson, a depth cornerback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, has just recently been placed on the injured reserve. So the Bucs can't catch a break in terms of their cornerback injuries. Um, and they've also been dealing with guys like Jason Pierre-Paul being out for some stretch of time. Levante David's missed a game or two. Antoine Winfield Jr.'s missed a game or two. They've had injuries on the defensive side of the football all over the map, right? But as time has been progressing here, the offensive side of the football, I feel, is starting to suffer just as much. 
Antonio Brown has missed a good stretch of time so far this year. I think he's missed half the games the Bucks have played so far uh, up to this point. Same thing with Rob Gronkowski. These guys have missed already half the year so far. Not a good thing. And now Chris Godwin potentially dealing with an injury as well. Not good. Scotty Miller, again, he may come back, but he's still dealing with a thing. Uh, it's just been tough, man. The injuries have been a tough thing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to deal with on both sides of the football. And, you know, fair credit to say the Washington football team, they have some injuries of their own. Montez Sweat is going to be out for this game with a broken jaw. He's one of their better pass rushers. They also have some other guys out at other positions as well. But I really think in terms of star power that's going to be missing for this game, you've got to give the edge to the Buccaneers here. And, and I really don't think it's even that close so that was another thought i had was man the tampa bay buccaneers are dealing with a lot of injuries but it's always that next man up mentality right we've seen um in the case of rob ronkowski oj howard cam Brate have to step up in the case of antonio brown we've seen tyler johnson have to step up if chris godwin's out as well tyler johnson's the number two wide receiver he will be getting a lot of targets thrown his way if antonio brown chris godwin and scotty miller all three of them can't go then you're going to be looking at Mike Evans at the one, Tyler Johnson at the two, probably Jalen Darden at the three. Um, you know, Cyril Grayson, he's another guy who may get a lot of playing time in this Washington football team game. Brashad Perriman, baby, who they just signed to the practice squad. He's another guy who may get some, you know, good amounts of playing time due to all the injuries that are going on. Um, at both sides of the football, you're seeing that next man up mentality take shape and take form and overall i feel like considering everything i think the depth has held up pretty relatively well in my opinion but those were just some thoughts i had on that situation moving forward let's take a look at the buccaneers opponent right now the washington football team uh, we talked about how really their team has stayed generally the same on both sides of the football but for some reason, the Washington football team's defense has regressed in a major, major way as they are one of the worst defenses in the league right now. Um, their pass rush has taken a major step back. Yes, they're without Montez Sweat, but they still have a lot of their def uh, defensive linemen who were there last year in that playoff game. Chase Young is still there. The big boys that they have in the interior defensive line are still there. It's just not clicking as much. The secondary for the Washington football team is one of the worst secondaries in the league right now. It's just been tough, right? I don't know if opposing offenses have just figured out Ron Rivera's defense or what's going on here, but this is not the same Washington football team defense that the Buccaneers played in the wild card round of the playoffs. That was, you know, a defense to be feared at that time. They've regressed in a major way right now, and it very, very much shows. However, again, you can't count this team out. They've got some good pieces on defense who can play well. It's just a, situ a uh, situation of things not going well for them this season so far as they do have a 2-6 and six record. And then you look at the offense. They have Taylor Heineke, who is a good, you know, versatile type of quarterback, right? They have Antonio Gibson at the running back position. I'm a huge fan of his. I wanted him on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a time ago. He is a good very good pass catching versatile type of running back they've got terry mclaurin who i think is a very very solid weapon um and they've got some other you know role player type guys in there as well who can do some good things but overall when you look at the talent of both these teams at both sides of the football i'm gonna say even with injuries i still think you give tampa bay the nod here because the captain is tom brady uh you know, and, and point blank, that just elevates your team to a whole nother level, regardless of who he's working with. The O-line's still healthy. The Bucks' run game is still healthy. Uh, the Washington football team, while they do have some pieces on the offensive side of the football and on the defensive side of the football, it's just not been working for them so far this year, and, and it's been showing in a big way. Finally, guys, the last thing I thought about was just one more storyline. Ron Rivera, hey, former Panthers head coach as well. He knows how to play well against the Bucs. I remember, you know, heck, division rival games against the Panthers was always so frustrating when Ron Rivera was their head coach because Cam Newton, uh, Greg Olson, that really good Panthers defense that they had for a lot of years there. Uh, Steve Smith, just the list goes on and on of all these frustrating players that the Panthers had that Ron Rivera helped coach up. So again, you know, it's always tough 
whenever you play divisional opponents. It's always tough whenever you play former divisional opponent coaches like the Bucks are doing this Sunday with Ron Rivera. So again, I still think it should be a fun and interesting game. But guys, at the end of the day, you know, I talk about this. The Washington football team, they've regressed defensively, right? This isn't the same defense. Offensively, they're missing some pieces. It's it's not as strong of an offensive unit as the team probably would have hoped they could have been. Curtis Samuel is out at wide receiver. That's huge for them. Um, and I think when you just look at these two teams stacking up against each other right now, regardless of the star power that the Buccaneers are missing with Antonio Brown, Rob Gronkowski, potentially Chris Godwin. If Chris Godwin plays, I mean, that's phenomenal. You really, you really do give the nod to the Buccaneers offense at that point. But I think even without those guys, you still have a very potent Buccaneers offense who can do some really, really good things. I think especially the run game, I could see them doing really well. This might be the, you know, potentially the best game of Leonard Fournette's season so far if he's able to really get the, you know, ball rolling and build a lot of steam for himself. Could be Fournette's best game. But overall, I think the Buccaneers just have more talent right now regardless of their injuries against this Washington football team. Do they have the potential to play better than what they've played throughout the first half of the year? Yes, of course they do, but I'm still going to go ahead and give the nod to the Bucks here with a final score of 31 to 17 in favor of the Bucks. But that's my opinions. That's my prediction, guys. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts again down in the comment section below. Again, do not forget, guys, my reactions live stream will be on location this Sunday at the Cannon Fire Watch Party with the Berry House Brewing Company. If you can't make it, come show up, come hang out. It will be a lot of fun. And again, for those of you who won't be able to attend, I will still be live talking about some Buccaneers football. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Now I'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now and go Bucks.